Well, hello, and welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. So last week I was looking at, um, what did I do last year to, to mark the beginning of school? Well, it turns out nothing because I lost my voice during the first week of school. So I decided I'd better record this puppy early, so here it is. So this is the show where I look at fountain pens and inks that I'm using during the week. So let's dive into it. Uh, if, if videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and all price points, I'd invite you to subscribe. And I've got uh, quite the collection here. Um, I don't really know, I don't have a real brilliant topic this week, but uh, I, I have some general interest stuff I'm going to throw in at the end of this video, so perhaps I'll think of something by the time I get there. So let's take a look at the pens. So from left to right, I let the cat out of the bag this week that I own this pen. This is a Parker Dual Fold Centennial. This one is a something I picked up on impulse while purchasing something else. This is a uh, Picasso Irene. Uh, let me get the correct full name here. I wrote it down. Uh, Picasso Greek Irene. I apologize. The, the close-ups will be interesting. Uh, this is an Aurora style. This is a Schaefer. I'm calling it an Imperial, but it's a Schaefer 330. It's the Imperial line, but didn't go by that name. Lamy 2000. And by the way, first day of school, Lamy 2000 is my daily writer. Some reason I left it lay on the counter, but I had all my I had my pen case with me. So this for the first day of school, the Schaefer became my daily writer pen. Um, the um, well, okay, that, that, that threw me off my line. Okay, Platinum 3776 with the Koi finish and surprisingly still has ink in it, but I was sure it would be empty by now, and it is. It's just still writing, so I thought I'd include it because it's pretty. Uh, Schaefer Balance, a uh, Parker Dual Fold purchased here in North Dakota, and finally, it is that time again to see how another Platinum 3776 does with uh, staying ink. As always, I'm going to record everything in the Bomo Art Journal, which actually does play into one of the random off topics that I'll be doing at the end of this video. So my first pen is a modern Parker Dual Fold. I let it out of the bag when I did a video review this week of the part of a vintage Dual Fold, and I laid this one down for comparison. This is a Centennial, if you're interested. It's a, a bigger pen. I have wanted one since I was a little kid, and you know, now that school's starting, I'm getting closer to my first paycheck. I see where my spending is, and uh, yeah, I went ahead and purchased one. It's a, uh, you know, it's a nice pen. I uh, had that sonnet that I purchased in Fargo, uh, which got me back into F Parker, and uh, yeah. And now this is no vintage pen. Don't expect flex or anything like that. But the naysayers on modern Parkers don't have the full story. They are good pens. Perhaps not the same as the vintage, but they are good quality pens. I was looking for a date code. I, I can't find it on this pen. So if anybody knows where it would be on a Parker Centennial, let me know. I couldn't find it on the vintage dual fold either, but I believe from further research... It, they may not have been there. It was made about the time they started doing date codes. But this one is well past the date code era, so I don't know why there isn't one. And I'm sure there is, I just can't find it. So this is a Parker Centennial Dual Fold. I... Uh, wasn't particularly interested in a fine point in it. I wanted a broader nib, but uh, at this price point, I took what I could get uh, because the other nib choices were much more expensive from this seller. Uh, by the way, it seems kind of weird that I'm using such a dainty pink color ink, but notice what happens to it as it uh, ages. It just doesn't seem to match an orange pen, but whatever. Uh, this is Platinum Classic, of course. 
You may have guessed that from the way it's changing color. Just a very nice smooth writing pen and it's very comfortable in the hand. Uh, I have my daily writer. I, I can see how this could be someone's daily writer and look at the detail they thought of. Even the this labeling and everything is lined up with the nib so you see it. You know, it's just a very well made pen and it kind of has that expensive sound as you put it together. It's just I like it. This next pen was a random impulse purchase when I purchased some things I needed. It was at a low enough price point that I could randomly purchase it. And I honestly have no pen like this in my collection. It, was, it sold as a Picasso Greek Irene, but it has a bunch of other words after that that didn't seem to be part of the name of the pen. Uh, yes, that cap is like flower petals. Uh, it makes it very awkward for putting in the shirt. So, because first I'm catching on the petals, and then this clip, I just have a very hard time getting anything under that clip, and all the leaves on it really fight the shirt. And ah, not thrilled with that. This is a pen that's all about looks. It's never going to ride in my pocket. I like the jewel on the end though. That's pretty. Uh Hooded nib, it's an extra fine nib. I don't like metal grips, but at least they were smart enough uh, if we're going to have a metal grip that they made it textured. This also seemed worthy of a bright pink ink, but in this case it really is bright pink and won't change. So the Picasso Greek Irene, fairly smooth writer. Um, gets very slender toward the end there, but uh, it, it's just an interesting pen. And it came in several colors, but I, I just felt that the, the, the pink looked the best out of the choices they had there. Uh, and the ink in it is Lamy Coral. I have a Aurora style here with a broad nib in it. You've seen this one last, I remember, probably the last week is all. You no, know, it's one of the Aurora's lower cost options. Nowhere near as low cost as that Greek Irene Picasso thing, but low cost nonetheless for Aurora. Steel nib. I love this ink and I am sad that it's discontinued. It is Monte Grappa. I don't have much experience with their pens. I own one and I like it very much, but I haven't seen anything else that they make that makes me say, hmm, that looks nice. I wouldn't mind owning that. Um, as I said, this pen, Schaefer, uh, in parentheses, Imperial 330, uh, 1970s pen. So I hate to call it vintage because I'm a 1970s guy. That's when I was born, 1975. And, uh, just a slim black pen like I like. Squared off up here. This finial is round. Just a slip cap. Very unique sort of a nib. Uh, when I do my review of it, I've got a whole discussion on uh, how you can use that to sort of date the age of the pen, but I don't remember all that off the top of my head right now. I was going to batch film tonight. But I'm looking at how much battery is left on this camcorder and I'm thinking, ah, oh, probably not. Because I have an Instagram video to film. So maybe I'll wait till Sunday. Everything will be charged. My voice will have recovered from the first week of teaching, hopefully. And uh, I'll just do it then. I'll have more time. I won't be tired out from school. I'll be looking forward to going back, I guess. Oh, stop talking. So Parker Quink. And then it's a blue-black ink. So thank you, Fargo Fountain Pen Store, for getting uh, 
Zanbros for getting me interested in modern Parkers when I bought that Sonnet, and then I, oh, I do like this Parker Quink Black, and then I bought a blue, and I bought a, uh, oops, I just, oops, and I just knocked over my glass of water. Oh, well, it's, I'm in the basement, it'll dry. <laughs> that sounds terrible, but I'm glad it was just water. Um, but anyway, I, I found that I really like these blue-black inks, or the Parker inks, so I have all three colors now. This poor thing didn't make it to the first day of school because I left it sit there. So, uh, sorry, Lamy2000, you'll, you'll be there for the second day. And, of course, it's pretty obvious why I like it. It just writes well. It feels good in the hand. Uh, don't look. Somebody was asking me some questions about it, uh, I don't know, a week or so ago. Don't look for flex on this nib. It does have some line variation, but it's definitely not a soft nib. It's gold, but not soft. And the ink in it is Lamy Black. See, right now my throat really wants some of that water that I just spilled on the floor. and <laughs> Unless I go lick it up off the cement, that's not going to happen. All right, this will be the last week with this pen because, like I said, I can't see any more ink in the converter, so it's going to run dry. It may even run dry tonight. Who knows? But Platinum 3776 with a beautiful Koi celluloid. I think this is probably one of my most beautiful pens. It's writing pretty wet for a pen that's almost empty. And the ink in it is the infamous Robert Oster. Blue Water Ice. I, uh, this is another pen I wanted to batch film a review for this week, uh, which again, that'll be Sunday now. Not that it matters, I've got like 13 or 14 ready to go. I just, uh, when you saw that review of the Parker Dual Fold this week, that was lucky that I had videos ready to go because I needed that time and I didn't film anything this weekend because I was getting ready for school and uh, it always takes longer than you think. So, uh, I showed you a close-up last week, but I think it's worth looking at again. The ro I'm going with the rose, striped rose celluloid. Uh, former owner is Carmen Jordan, so if you're out there, Carmen, I have your pen. And then W.A. Schaefer, Pen Company, Fort Madison, Iowa, and all that. Patented in the USA, but it doesn't say manufactured. I would guess it's probably manufactured in the USA. You know, just because of the age of the pen, but I don't know that. And it's a number three nib, which uh, tells you what pen it's for. Gold nib, but not a particularly soft one. And I used a Parker ink in it. So it's a washable blue, the least impressive of all inks. <laughs> so here's the pen that got me into this modern Parker phase, a Parker Sonnet that I picked up in Fargo, North Dakota of all places. Uh, I have it written down, I just don't have it to hand. Parker always does these date codes, so you can know the age of the pen. So there's its date code. It made it an older sonnet. But I uh, don't remember how old. But I'm thinking I'm ready to film the review of this one. It's been through several fills now, and I've owned it for a few months. But at the same time, I have some pens I could review that I've owned a lot longer, so who knows. But I've got a whole big Parker overview video already made, so I'm thinking maybe I should review this before I 
release that one. So this is a Parker Sonnet. This has the medium steel nib. They are also sold with gold nibs. I, uh, I should talk about the difference there too. The ink in it is one I haven't used in a long time, Noodler's Purple Heart. That's a lubricating ink, so usually I'll use it in a pen when I have a stuck piston or something. Or sticking piston, but I decided just to put it in this one. And last but not least, this is a Platinum 3776. This is the sharp blue finish. It's a I want to say that there's a cathedral in France that has this color in its stained glass windows. But anyway, I, uh, I'm going to switch notebooks temporarily. I've been doing all my reviews in this Apica notebook. And uh, so I have a page back here somewhere that I didn't open ahead of time with all my platinum stuff on it. And what I've been doing is just writing a, the, the date when I test these pens. Now, you, you saw it, I wrote August 24th um, from the pens in use. That's the day the pens in use was issued. This is actually being filmed on the 22nd, so I will write August 22nd here. And we should zoom in just because it's that special an event, right? Oh, not that much. All right, so. Music nib. Oh, wow. So, yet again. Starts up just like a champ. So, I inked it up on May 7th of 2018. And on August 22nd of 2018, which would that be? Two, three months. It's started up right up just like a champ and I actually could have used this pen at school today because I uh, needed a wide pen and I don't happen to have one with me as you saw tonight so I am impressed by that that video of course will be released sometime probably November December that one's been a long-term project and that's part of what gave me the idea of doing uh, all this batch filming just to have videos ahead because school gets busy So this is a music nib, and I feel like I should pause briefly, point out this music nib has three tines. Um, it, it's, it's designed for making thin lines like that and fat lines like this. Uh, one way it's different from a stub is usually on a music nib, the, the nib is actually tipped, whereas a stub is not. And when you say a pen is tipped, it means it has a harder material on the tip of the nib. Uh, I inked all of these with the same cartridge. I ordered a pen which has appeared once on this channel that came with 10 platinum black cartridge, excuse me, platinum black cartridges. So rather than use them in that pen, because I definitely had other plans for that pen, I used uh, them to do this set of experimentation. So I have a few more of these to go. In uh, September I will open up the next one. Uh, I lost my page already. I don't need to go back. But anyway, those are the pens and inks that I'm using this week. Oh, and I just put my bare foot in the water that I spilled. That was a surprise. All right, so... Uh, I have some notebooks down here because of something um, that was brought up this week. But I, I want to hit some other topics first. And that one was upside down. So let me hit these other topics first. I wrote them down so I wouldn't forget because I, I, there were a few things I was thinking. One of them 
I have a purple cauliflower growing in my garden. I had given up on it, all the other ca cauliflower, cauliflowered and I ate them and they were done. I don't like cauliflower anyway as a crop because it's not like broccoli where it keeps producing. You get one head of cauliflower, done. So I'm going to insert, I just took it with my iPad one day after, uh, oh actually yesterday after I came back from working at school before the kids showed up. But uh, it is quite striking and I have never seen one in a grocery store so very cool. I, I already decided what I'm doing with it. It's so striking. What I'm going to do is I found a recipe for purple cauliflower hummus but there are no chickpeas in it, no tahini so I don't know how they get away with calling it hummus. But the cool thing with it is you uh, serve it with lemon wedges so that the people you, you're serving it to can squeeze the lemon wedges out on it and it turns a bright fuchsia pink. So the chemistry teacher in me is like, yeah! <laughs> so I got to do that. Uh, I picked a whole big basket, if you follow my Instagram channel, of uh, eggplant this week. I ended up giving a lot of them away just with school starting. I didn't have time to deal with them all. I did make an eggplant lasagna and I have a few, I have two more saved in the refrigerator. I make a, a dip out of eggplant that's uh, kind of like baba ganoush, but I don't know if it really has a name. You roast them and then you, yeah. Anyway, uh, so that's on my list. Uh, I had a striped one I was going to just pop up here, just show you under the camera, but I left it upstairs and I don't feel like going back upstairs. All right. Um, one other thing that came up this week, I saw a video by JPL about the Sydney Pen Show. If you don't know JPL, he is a fountain pen reviewer in Australia. Um, he had, he didn't really have any video of the show itself, but he had some photographs and just talked a bit about his experience. One thing he mentioned, I have some vintage Schaefer's here. I've been sort of curious about modern Schaefer's. I have that Schaefer Tyrannus I reviewed, I don't know, some time back. Um, I was curious what the modern Schaefer line is like, and I haven't been able to find very many pens, and he said, yeah, that there was not many pens at the table, so they've been bought by Cross, so who knows where that will go. Sometimes that can be the death knell of a brand of pens. Um, what was it? Ever Sharp that uh, Parker bought up. And, and they disappeared. So I hopefully that's not the same thing. But he, he mentioned you know a couple of things. First of all, he's in an exotic to me an exotic location. I'm sure he he's just like yeah it's Sydney whatever. Just like me saying it's Bismarck whatever. Um, but I think it would be fun just to go around a pen show and try the new pens, see some new pens. You know Chris Rap Fifty Two has done some of his finds at the DC pen show. Some of the other reviewers have been to some pen shows. I haven't been to one. I figured it out that my closest one is the Denver pen show. Well, it happens when I'm teaching, so it's really hard to get time off, especially we just don't have substitute teachers around here. Um, oh, can I have a day off to go to a pen show? No! <laughs> um, so... My next closest is probably Chicago. That's over a thousand miles away. And then we're talking like St. Louis or something. And we're just talking obscene distances. So, I don't know. <laughs> Someday. Uh, but I think it would be fun meet your own people. Your own fountain pen type people. Now, I've read the comments a few times that, well, you, know, you, you, you probably don't have anyone using a fountain pen where you are. Oh, no, not true. I actually have two students who make fountain pens. Uh, I maybe I'll have to. No, I don't have it down here. I'll have to show you. I bought a ballpoint off one of them because, well, he was an eighth grader then. He's a senior now, so now he probably knows what he's doing. But back then, it was just kind uh, of, well, I'll be nice and buy the cheapest thing here. So I should buy a pen from each of them. Um, let's see. And then, uh, I don't know. I, I thought about maybe in the summer when I go east to visit my parents, but there aren't really any pen shows that are convenient there. So, yeah. Okay, I am babbling. So I'm going to quick restart that camera because what happens is that camera overheats and then it quits at an inopportune moment. Um, the other thing that I wrote down under my uh, last pens in use, Pierre Gustafs Gustafsson did a video about me, which <laughs> that was a surprise. Uh, I always... Well, I am one of the small reviewers. I've, I've been at it for four, over four years now, and I finally broke the 2,000 viewer mark, but I'm not one of those, I'm one of those channels that turns off people just as much as they turn them on, I guess. But uh, I uh, 
finally passed the 2000 mark. And, uh, but anyway, he did a video about me and about my style. And one of the things he brought up was, this is very scientific. In fact, he get, he knew I was a teacher. He didn't, didn't know what I taught. He guessed I was either science or math or history. Uh, definitely not history. I don't think I'd want to be a history teacher in North Dakota. Um, science is okay. We're not part of the Bible Belt, so I get away with teaching evolution and Big Bang and all that. Um, but yeah, anyway, so you guessed right. I, my degree is physics, but rural school, I teach everything. I've even taken the coursework. I'm also a math teacher, and I have taught all levels of math, all levels of science. I uh, prefer science, but I have taught both. And this, he, he just said that this is the kind of approach a scientific person would take. And as he's talking, he, he's doing all these random drawings, all these scribblings, and the frugal part of my mind is saying, no, you can't use up the paper that way. You need to conserve. Well, that's silly because the bottom half of this page is unused. So, uh, <laughs> uh, and the back side of each of these, well, most of these sheets, I've used the back sides of some, are unused also. But his point was he never sees my natural writing. So I thought I would just show you some natural writing. So, I have my notes on today's show, but I'm not going to show you those because I had wrote those with the, him in mind. But I have an upcoming review of this notebook. It's a cognitive surplus. That's probably a little too close up, but I want to show you the handwriting. Um, I haven't filmed it yet. That's another one I'd like to batch film. So I'm just going to go back to a random... I've been working on a series of videos, my driving videos, which are part of what drives down my subscribers. Seems like every time I do one, I lose a few subscribers. But uh, anyway, um, this is me writing with the idea that nobody would ever see it. So that's what my writing looks like when I'm not planning for anybody but me to see it. I don't know what pen I was using. I do know I was using blue and black. Kind of the black was the research part. The blue was the commentary I wanted to bring in. That's how I outline my uh, videos. I don't read this, but it's there to keep me on task. And because I've got notes like this written here too. I've got all the things I want to say about Pierre Gustafson and about JPL written down here. So, uh, but yeah, that's my uh, natural writing um, signature. I'm a science teacher in Southwest North Dakota. I just told you who I am, but you know I like to think I have a little anonymity, so I don't uh, usually sign my name. Um, so this is a campus notebook, Kikuyo. I was well, I don't see a date in it. Oh, here we go, April twenty eighth, two thousand thirteen. That was very carefully calligraphy calligraphied written. Uh, I, a couple of years ago, I made some changes to my handwriting. I'll show you that too, I think. Uh, but anyway, um, that's how I was writing. I guess it's five years ago now. This is a novel. <laughs> I totally changed who I was since I wrote this. So, uh, yeah, that whole personality and beliefs change is going to have, it means I've been redoing this basically from scratch, which is why it hasn't made any headway, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. Now I'm going to get up, don't worry, I'll edit this part out, I'm going to get up, I'm going to go over, I have a box over here with some of my writing from when I was younger. Okay, in the process of grabbing these, I stepped in the wet spot again, so yay. Uh, anyway, th I have a stack here. This isn't all of them, but this is some of my early writing. I have actually been writing since I was in third grade. Now, I have a decluttering side, and sometime back, probably when I was moving to... No, it has to have been before that. Anyway, some point in my life, I decided to declutter all that embarrassing young child stuff I'd written, but now I wish I wouldn't have and would have kept it. Um, some of it I threw away later because, it, well, that Parker Quink washable blue kind of faded on the pages, which was interesting. But here's one. I would say I wrote this in high school. Uh, just going by what book it is. So I had a different style of writing in high school. And Parker Quink Black, of course. Uh, this, I must have been in a car or on a bus or something thinking bus again <laughs> I, I don't know it's been too long I don't remember but anyway so my that's my handwriting high school me let's see this 
What is this? Oh, this has to be college because I'm talking about LC circuits. And that sounds like my college. Oh, yeah, I know where. Yep, this was written in college. This is college me apparently using a ballpoint. But, you know, couldn't get away from my Parker Quink black and uh, fountain pen. Probably the Parker Vector. Or I used to have a cross something or other. Back then when you couldn't order online, it... It kind of depended on if you could find a store that sold fountain pen ink cartridges. This one, what is this one? This is probably high school. Uh, I used to have a thing for Mead grad notebooks. Now I know that they're not the most wonderful paper, but hey, it actually did pretty well on there, I would say. This is definitely from college because it's a notebook I bought at college. It's a Roaring Spring notebook. Uh, let's see here. Oh, mostly ballpoint in this one. That's interesting. Oh, well, let's turn to this page because I don't know what pen this is. But it apparently <laughs> soaked through whatever it was. But it has to have been a ballpoint or a gel or something. But wow, did that soak through. Interesting. And then here, again, Parker Quink Black. Hmm. Okay, this one. Probably college. No, same. That's kind of my writing. This one, Mead Grad. So this could be high school again. Let me see what story it is. Hmm. Late high school. And this last one, another Mead grad notebook. Oh, let's see. Huh. Oh, okay, so this guy's been shot. I can't remember why. I don't really remember what this story's about. Oh, I, okay, wrote this one in college. Now I'm recognizing the story. So anyway, for those of you who are interested what my natural handwriting looks like, there you go. Uh, both me now and me high school and college. I, I have here one other little dealio. This is a manila folder. I, uh, I liked to draw, di I still do this, draw diagrams of the bigger, more important buildings. Um, Oh, <laughs> I also back then used to pick up random printouts that nobody picked up and use them as my notebook paper. Um, more sketches. I'm vaguely remembering what story this is from, but uh, not entirely. Um, oh, I showed you that already. Let's see here. Hmm. Now, ooh, going back a little further. Oh, what's that? Oh! I used to try to be more artistic. This was... Boy. Well, okay. This is with a TI-99-4A word processor, whatever the program was called. Um, we're talking very old technology, but I don't know why I wrote, typed it up and stapled it and made such a nice title on it and everything, but... You know, I won't say, you know, that's a very masculine looking woman. Um, I won't say I had the best art, but I was trying. I, I don't know, I always think it'd be nice to sketch, but I don't want to, oh, okay, there's a comment in the back. So apparently I had to turn this in for a grade. <laughs> so that's not my writing. <laughs> oh, here's one I, I had to write a poem Back in, I must have been a senior because it says 1994. That's the year I graduated high school. I remember the typewriter I used for this. I, because she didn't want anything with a dot matrix printer, and I'm like, oh, so I used the typewriter that we had in the house. Uh, this is 
Also typewriter, another story. Looks well, photocopied, but it's, I know it's. Oh, I remember this assignment. It was for creative writing. Let me slightly cover something, my name up. Uh, it was for creative writing. I wrote it two days before my birthday. And uh, yeah, so we wrote, I forget what all. I have a Ferdinand the Fairy Bowl, and I have a, as, as in this bowl is a girl's wish giver instead of a big, instead of a nice sweet old lady. And then there was a photograph, or, or drawing we had to write a story to go with. And this one, <laughs> that TI-99 4A, I was a nerd back then. So I had myself a pen name picked out. I think my real name is much more interesting. I had figured out how to do the copyright symbol on it. I had a I used to like programming on that computer, and I would call all my programs TI games. So, yeah, so here is my Star Trek knockoff. So, uh, yeah, I would have been 14. Now, this is the typed version of what would have been written originally. But I can't find the original written version, so I don't know where they got to. If you've ever seen those boxes where people buy paper, you know, the many reams of paper, usually it's only an office that buys them. I have a whole box full of notebooks like this. I mean, it's mostly garbage. It's not good writing, but it's where I learned what I do now. And hopefully at some point, all that practice of writing since I was in third grade will pay off. I'm hoping with this book that I'm working on right now, rewriting, because, you know, my total change in personality and everything. But, uh... Anyway, the important thing is that I'm writing, so that's one of the things that eats up my time besides doing fountain pen videos. And that's part of why I got into fountain pens in the first place, because they felt good to write with. So, uh, And I've been writing with a fountain pen since fourth grade. So anyway, <laughs> that got way off of that. Now I think you can see why I didn't really have a good hook to ask you, here's something to comment on this week, because it was going all over the place. So maybe I'll just say... Uh, We'll have two com two questions maybe you could answer in the comments. One, is there a, how, what would be a suggestion for um, Pierre Gustafson's request that I have my more natural handwriting in? What would be a way I could do that? Um, and then another question might be, what do you write? You know, I don't just own the fountain pen. I mean, I have a couple that are pampered pets. My Instagram channel is getting a pampered pet tonight. But... Most of them are used for writing. If I don't like writing with them, I don't keep them. I mostly give them away. I've, I'm, I have one I was trying to sell, but then the buyer fell through, and now I'm just giving it to somebody. But anyway, I uh, that's me. <laughs> so what do you write? And uh, I have the link to Pierre Gustafson's video in my uh, video description if you want to watch it and see what you think. And definitely see a different sort of pen reviewer as, as he said he's not scientific like me he has his own style which is a uh, very unique among pen reviewers so i'd suggest watching that so anyway if uh videos like this interest you i would invite you to subscribe and uh comment down below about what you write or what you think i could do about instituting more natural handwriting so i uh, thank you for watching we'll see you later Bye bye